Tom Brizza music can be equated to the old mandolin orchestras of the 1920s and 1930s. Those are long gone now. And some of the old mandolin orchestras that the, the Italian folks used to have, we were very much like them. And I can even equate this to the Greek bazooki orchestras that have that string sound. I always like to give my dad the credit for my... Uh, building because uh, as a youngster they they bought me three or four ukuleles which I managed to demolish in a matter of hours. It was hard times. It was the de the de depression. So after three ukes they couldn't afford to buy me any more. So my dad, who was quite a craftsman in his own right, fashioned me a uh, a prima out of plywood and strung it up with rubber bands. And I watched this whole procedure. And I think somewhere in the back of my mind, he created this desire for me to, to be able to do this. What I've got here is a piece of ash and I'm just going to draw out the body, cut it out, it'll wind up in this shape. And at this point she's ready for the saw.
Okay, with the body shape completed, the next procedure will be to route out the inside, make a cavity here with the uh, Forester tool. Done two holes so far now. This procedure will probably have to be repeated 20 more times before I uh, get to this point. And this is very rough. This is a tool that uh, I use for straightening these sides out. And uh, I inherited this from a very old instrument maker from Chicago. This will illustrate how I do this. Uh, this instrument's a little farther ahead because I've already attached the neck. After this is all completed, I'll come in with a uh, with a sanding drum and smooth it out nicely and with a, another carbide cutter I'll come in and straighten out the, uh, the, uh, the bottom side of the inside. With this tool here, I'll be able to uh, get all the rough spots out of the out of the back portion. You can see it's, it's much nicer now. Uh, I have a little work to do on the sides here and I, I think I'll do this one with a handy grinder. Getting it to this step here, we're ready to affix a top to it. is down almost to the thickness that I want and you may wonder well you know don't you measure it anything well after 55 years I think I've developed a sense of you know the thickness and what I'm going to do now is I'll take it on a surface sander here and, and sort of clean it up a little. Well, the first Prima player that I played with was played on a turtle turtleback instrument, and I was enthralled by a turtleback Prima. So the first Prima that I was going to make, I decided was going to be one of, one made out of a turtle shell. My brother had a friend in uh, Valparaiso that had a farm, and on that farm they had this swamp, and the owner said there are turtles galore in this swamp. So we ventured to Valparaiso. My brother, who was an expert marksman, 
with the gun. We sat on the shores and one raised its head and he nailed it. And from that turtle shell, I took it to the plant where I worked and I made that instrument on government time, which is your lunch hour. I was able to make the scroll head and I did it with files. I still don't know how I did that. After I completed the instrument, it was not much on sound, but it was an incentive to go ahead and make a number two instrument, which I made out of wood, and I did get better results with that one. And it had seemed with each instrument I made, I seemed to progress a little bit better. The neck block is made out of curly maple with a uh, black walnut runner down the middle. And it's a known fact that anything that is laminated like this is much stronger than uh, a, a block of uh, curly maple by itself. I've got this one ready. All I have to do is trace the neck pattern on here. OK, my next step would be to take it to the saw and cut this out. All right, I've cut out the female portion for the of the dovetail. And I found out through past experiences, my best bet is to uh, make the male end after I cut the uh, female out. Here you have the male, the female. This is the effect that you want. I made this one a little too large, but it's a good it's a good fit on the ends here. And there's nothing that prohibits you from filling in with little shims here and there. Alright, this is the, the method that I use for putting the tops on these small instruments, which really don't need any braces. A lot of builders do use the braces, but the more braces you put on this top, you you're going to the top won't uh, vibrate freely and you won't get nearly a great sound. These were actually uh, for putting violin backs and tops together. This was a fellow from Highland, and uh, well, he was still in operation. I, I bought a lot of things from him. After this dries, what you do is you come down the button up to the bottom part. Okay, uh, after the top is fastened onto the instrument, then come some of the uh, decorative things that we call purfling, which is multicolored multi wood. You can get it in many different patterns. And uh, this is what it looks like once it's affixed to the instrument. And then this is what we call white binding. It's celluloid acetate and this becomes the outer edge on the instrument. Well, once the top is uh, ready for this, I have a special router there with a micrometer feed on it, and it allows me to go in to, to the depth that I need, and also the depth down, route that out, and then after uh, warming this up, I'll bend it into place, and mask it onto the instrument itself, and let it stay that way for two or three hours, then come along and actually glue it in.
I think I can uh, soak this now and get it ready for bending. You can see it's like a wet noodle now. Now after that dries, I'll glue it in with this pattern maker's glue and come in with the celluloid white binding. My greatest achievement as a builder occurred last September and October when I was bestowed with the National Heritage Award. When I got the call from Mr. Berge, I want to tell you, I was on the verge of tears. I couldn't believe it. And why I didn't pass out when I was talking to him, I'll never know. My orchestra as well, when they found out that they were going to make the trip along with me to Washington and perform at the concert, they were quite taken by it. They they didn't know what to expect. They didn't even know what this honor was that I was getting. That first night in Washington, uh, all the recipients, we uh, had a little get-together where we became acquainted with each other and met each other. They were all delightful people, and they, they all seemed to come up the hard way, and, which I figured this is, this is what I did because I had no help. I had to do all this by trial and error. And of course, the uh, the concert uh, the following day at uh, at the university was another uh, spectacular thing. We even got an encore. Uh, I was able to uh, to sing my wife's favorite song without uh, breaking up, and uh, it turned out to be that's the highlight of my whole career. It's a 13-inch scale, and the bridge will wind up almost in the center of this instrument, and that's just where I want it. So I'll just proceed and get ready for securing the fingerboard. Now comes a spell where I'll have I'll uh, glue this on and we'll have another little weight. But we're about three steps away from uh, physically finishing this. I'll be at a little stand still here for a while now. Perhaps I'll do the fretwork now. After these frets are all in, they'll have to be honed with a uh, abrasive tool 
And then with a fret file, the crown will have to be put back into them because if you know if you got a high fret, you're going to have buzzes. The easiest thing in the world is to cut them and pound them in, but that's not the end of the action. You have to have a, an abrasive stone that will hit all the high spots, and then without a doubt, there will be certain parts of it that are will have a flat spot, and you want to get that out. So with a with a fret file, with this curvature on the inside, you just hit each file until you see that little flat spot disappear. I shaped the neck of this instrument on my drill press with a what they call a rotary file. And this is in the parcel that I bought from the old instrument maker from Chicago. I've had it for 30 years, and I don't know how, how, how long he had it, but it still does the job, still able to shape uh, hardwood with it. Scraping uh, is really a good system. It's, I think it's actually better than filing. I'm sure that the old makers of the long gone years didn't have sandpaper available to them, so they used scrape, scrapers, you know. The future of Tamboritsa building is really in jeopardy now, uh, simply because it's the money game. Probably just going to be a, a small time hobby with, for them, where uh, I, I've built a lot of instruments in my career. I, I think I'm nearing now the 2000 mark. And this was always in addition to having two other jobs. I value those old timers that were the first musicians that came here and kept the music alive. And for those homesick people that came here and made this country their home, that was, a, that was about as close to home as they could get. But I'm wearing it a little thin now. And uh, I may have to slow down soon, especially with the playing. That. Uh, last gig where I played five hours without taking a break. <laughs> there, weren't, there, won't, there won't be too many more of those kind of jobs. Okay, what I'm gonna do here is put the dots in so the player will know where he's at, hopefully. Start to uh, preparation for receiving the uh, machines on the head. Ne 
Okay, I'm going to drill the holes for the machine. Okay, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to pull a, put a little orange stain, water base, to give this a little more glow here in the middle after I, because I'm going to shade this with a walnut uh, shading lacquer. And if this is what has a more of a gold tint, I think it'll look nicer. I'll let this dr dry thoroughly and then I can start with my, uh, my, my walnut shadowing lacquer. This is my pattern for the hole spacing here. And you see that no holes in there yet. I will place the pattern on top. And first I'm going to drill the holes and then I'm going to take a copper red hot rod and, and burn the hole through. And that also will seal the pores of the hole. So here we go. Vesele se i to bom ponose, a je potom u svetu prkose. Pjevaj liko, i vesela budi, nek se srce u svakom probudi. This is almost finalized, but I have yet to, uh, to work on the action up here. But it's got a nice slim neck. Some youngster will, will really appreciate this. And that's uh, the birth of a Prima. <laughs>